Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this week we'll continue our series on color correction by correcting the color balance of an image. Last week we changed the color balance of this shot to make it look like it was shot in daylight and we used Avid's curves. Now let's do basically the same thing with the color wheels. For that, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use the RGB parade because, you know, they don't interact the way the curves do. If you work with the color wheels, I think it's best to watch the vector scope because basically the interface of the color wheels match the output of the vector scope. The vector scope shows you the hue of the color by the direction of the vector and the luminance and saturation of the color by its length. So the farther it is apart from the center, the more color there is. At the same time, if something is exactly at the center, it has no color to it. So, how do we go about it? You have three different color wheels. One is for the shadows, one is for the midtones, and one is for the highlights. The thing about the color wheels is that you are stuck with the way Evid has set them up. The shadows are exactly where Evid feels the shadows should be, and the midtones are where Evid thinks they should be, and the highlights as well. So you can't control where the transitions between the sections should be and how hard or soft you'd like them. So this is why it gives you a little less control than the curves that you can change by putting a huge lot of points on them. That's why I personally prefer the curves. But the great thing about the color wheels, of course, is if you want to change the color of, of the image in general, all you have to do is take the midtones and drag them into the color that you like. And it will, you know, basically do what you want to do. You want it to be yellow? There it is, yellow. You want it to be blue? There it is, blue, right? So maybe you can, you know, work with them a bit better than I can. Now again, we know that the black balance of this image is all right, so let's not change the shadows here. But we know that the white balance of the image is not all right, so let's change the highlights. Now what you have to do is just drag this around a, bit, a little and check out the, the vector scope. Now what you want is the thing that is moving around here is what we're changing. And this should be as much in the center of the vector scope as we can get it. Because if it's in the center of the vector scope, means there's no color to it, means the white is actually white correctly balanced. Now again, with hardware vector scope, this would be a lot nicer. This is actually pretty hard to, <laughs> to see on this uh, software scope. So we'll cheat a little. <laughs> I guess we've done a pretty okay job. It's, it's pretty much in the center here. Let's check with our color picker. Well, still uh, a bit much blue in there. But bef before we going crazy trying all the different points here and just guessing where uh, our vector scope is gonna be when we release the mouse button. We can use this in the little color picker here. So let's just reset this color wheel, click the color picker, and there's a tooltip that says remove color cast from highlights. What this does is you turn on the color picker and you say, okay, where in the image is my white? It's here. Then just click and it will remove the cast from the image. Now you can see uh, it hasn't done a lot because uh, I, obviously this is already a lot of mid-tones that are used here in this image. So let's do the same thing with the mid-tones. And boom! <laughs> Looks a lot different. <laughs> Do the same thing for the shadows. All right, now this is the 
semi-automatic color correction. Let's just check this with our color picker here. Well, actually still a bit too blue. So let's move the highlights a bit more into the yellow reddish corner. Check again. It's a bit better. And let's check out the blacks. They seem all right. But it's a very yellow image now, I'd say. Right. You can see if you look at the skin tones that there's a lot more green than blue in the skin tones. So the mid-tones have been moved a little strongly into the red yellow corner there. So let's turn them down a bit. Check again. That actually looks a bit better. But again, I personally think that, you know, there's uh, not a lot of control when using the color wheel. So I don't know. <laughs> I personally, I personally prefer the curves. Um, especially because you can actually uh, control all the midtones, you know, what the midtones are and the highlights and the shadows. So, you know, it, it looks better than it did before. So let's turn off the hue offsets and turn them on again. And you can see this looks a lot nicer than before if you want it to look like a daylight anyway. But I think we did a better job when we did the curves then with the hue offsets. It's very, very good red, I think. The hue offsets. Oh, maybe like this. <laughs> As you can see, you can tweak this all day long. But I think we've done a, a reasonable job here. So uh, that is basically changing the color balance of an image. Now, of course, if this were a real color correction, we would uh, change different parts of the image differently. For example, maybe only change the skin tones and nothing else. Um, or only change uh, maybe this uh, car, make it darker uh, than it is now or something like this. Uh, but for this, you'd need uh, secondary color correction, which is unfortunately not built into uh, Media Composer. Um, I have done a tutorial on how to do it in Media Composer, and uh, it is available for download at avidscreencast.com, of course. If you want to learn a lot more on color correction, I really strongly recommend Steve Hullfish's book, The Art and Technique of Digital Color Correction. You can buy it from Amazon, and if you use the link in the show notes to do so, I'll get a nice kickback, and that would offset my bandwidth costs, and that would be very nice. You can also buy anything else from Amazon if you follow this link, and I will still get the kickback. So, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, <laughs> and the, the book is really, really amazing, and you should buy it. It is, it is so worth the money you spend. It is really, really great. Um, honestly, <laughs> not just because I get the kickback, but it's just plain awesome. All right. Thank you for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, um, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com or on the iTunes store. You can also check out past episodes on the website. If you have any comments or suggestions, future show topics or anything, just drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website. I really like your comments and I really appreciate them and thank you very much for commenting. <laughs> Most of the time you're nice to me, which, which I really like. <laughs> thank you. Um, don't forget to follow me on the Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast and on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. If you'd like to know what kinds of things I do professionally, check out editguy.com.
de, which is where I promote myself. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.